Afternoon, everybody. Hello again. This is the Had Enough Guy, your uh, balance coach. My name is Ivor Chester. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. Uh, today, we're going to have a, a brief understanding of, uh, well, a story that uh, happened from real life, though not the single most riveting moment I've ever had. It certainly was a bit of an eye opener. Uh, you see, the kids are out of town. Uh, of our four children, three, two are gone on a mission trip and one is in a canoe trip up in Arkansas. And I miss them dearly and the house is astonishingly quiet and I miss them. However, uh, I'm using this time and so is my wife to do a few things around the house that it's just easier to do when the kids are not under feet. One of the things I'm undertaking is I'm cleaning the aquarium in the kids' room because it just had been a while and we were noticing something uh, malodorous. So I got in there and I drained it and well, I, I took the fish out, the only occupant in there. And this is the occupant. Uh, my youngest assures me that this fish's name is Picky. And uh, you see him in there? Anyway. He's he's a nice little guy. I like bottom cats. I had one when I had an aquarium as a kid, which I had to clean that one out too. And that one I filled with ditch fish. I would find all these fish out in the ditches of uh, Pearland, and I'd bring them home and plop them in the water, and they actually turned out quite pretty. However, this guy was living in a pretty nasty aquarium that just needed some maintenance. So. I uh, pulled him out and drained the aquarium, cleaned it thoroughly, cleaned out all the, the plastic plants and the pagoda and the sunken pirate ship, changed out the filter. And it reminded me of a story I heard from somebody not too long ago. Yeah, hi, Picky. Uh, a story I heard from somebody said they had to bring their fish in to the vet. Now, being a dog owner and an occasional person who brings a, a cat, a that happens onto our property that needs a little help. I'd never thought about bringing a fish in for Pete's sakes. But sure enough, this person was saying that they brought a fish uh, into the vet because he had some kind of scale disorder. And I thought, well, okay, uh, kind of amazing. And as he brings it into the office, the vet looks at it and he examines the bowl and he he gets a piece of litmus paper and he does a chemical analysis of the water. And uh, he comes back to the owner, the, the dad with his kid there, very concerned about the fish. And he says to the dad, he goes, well, indeed your fish has got some kind of fin problem uh, for scales. And so what I recommend is that we treat the water. And I thought about that. And I'd never really considered, I, of course, I guess you wouldn't give the fish a shot or here, take this pill or something, but I, I'm going, well, yeah, of course you adjust the water. And then as I'm doing my job this afternoon, bent over the bathtub and all the cleaning that I had to do for about an hour and a half, uh, it occurred to me we sometimes are like fish like that. We don't adjust our environment to our best living conditions. We often uh, just accept swimming around in murky water. We don't really, uh, uh, we don't even notice. So we accept the the fungus, we accept the the dirt, we accept the mess, the smell, that is bad thoughts, that is bad uh, people around us, or at least bad intentions. Uh, we accept no goals, we accept bad results because of the environment, environment we're swimming around in. So these, again, these this environment is going to include mainly the people. Some people think that you just get the friends that you get, and that's not true if you're proactive about it. Yeah, you're gonna get the people who hang around you because these people are going to be uh, just drifting into the same life that you're drifting along. It's like being on the lazy river. But notice when you 
want to become more proactive and you slip off that inner tube on the pro on the uh, lazy river, all of a sudden you're going to feel the current and it's going to push you in the direction that you were initially going. It's going to take work for you to get out of it. When you do, all of a sudden you're the one driving. You're the one who gets to control what you're doing. You get to make your own goals. You get to make your own objectives, your own priorities, and you get to choose who is around you. Because when you're on the lazy river floating in that dirty water, uh, people just bump into you. The kids pass you, and you're bobbing along like a cork, just drifting with the tide, going along with the current. Those of us who seek better, we're the ones that have to get out of the water. We're the ones that have to stop drifting. We're the ones that become proactive about the people around you. And these are their friends. Now, how you can adjust this, of course, is understanding one, of course, your worth. And people who understand their worth set up different boundaries. And when you set up different boundaries, you're all of a sudden going to have different people around you. These people will support you. They'll hold you accountable. But they will never, ever, without your permission, uh, they will never drag you down. Those aren't friends. And somehow, somehow you think that it's appropriate to have these kind of friends around you. Those aren't friends again. These are people that just uh, have drifted into your life and you don't have the courage to change that. So you need to, one, set up boundaries and you say things like, well, don't. Don't do that around me or don't talk to me that way. And you don't have to be a jerk about it, but you're going to set up these boundaries assertively. Now, let me help you with this. When you start setting up these boundaries, these people aren't going to like it. They're going to uh, balk at it. And they're going to bristle and they're going to say, you know, gosh, you used to be so cool or why do I have to do this? And you get to say, because I said so. And you're starting to change the water in your environment. You're changing the things that you're floating around in. You start to master the very environment that you have chosen to be in. And again, it's not a matter of changing other people. If they want to change, they will, but you can't make them. However, what does change is how they behave around you. And that changes the water and cleans it up. You uh, stop swimming in filth and you start to have a, a greater clarity, a greater determination, better health, again, spiritually, mentally, physically, because this is something you want to do. This is something you've chosen to do, not just something that is happening to you. Don't let life happen to you. Make life happen by what you want, and then surround yourself with people who uh, support that belief, and you support theirs, because you're the one swimming in the tank. You're the one that uh, has your set your own environment. Anyway, that's that's my takeaway today from getting elbow deep in aquarium water. It was a, a skanky task, but it's all done. And now we have a crystal clear aquarium for Mr. Picky to get back into. So uh, and I'll be doing that tomorrow morning. Uh, that is if uh, my youngest uh, doesn't carry him around the house. You know, you never know around here. So uh, if you want more information, please feel free to drop me a line. I'm at iverchester.com. You can leave notes here in the, the side of this video. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, we will be having part two of our workshop happening next week, Monday at 7 o'clock here in Irving. You can get information also, again, at iverchester.com. I appreciate your time. Thanks again. We will see you tomorrow, same time, 1230. All right.